I think I met Mr. Bartlett in 1977, a year after I started at Pinkerton. He taught in the old alumni building upstairs, and that wasn't a building I went into very often. And I think I met him, strangely as this sounds, playing faculty football on a Friday afternoon, which teachers used to do. So the thought of Mr. Bartlett doing something athletic is scary in and of itself. I found him interesting, weird, um, intriguing sometimes at times. And so being new to New England when I moved here, I didn't know what New Hampshire was like and I certainly didn't know what North Country people were like. So he was really my introduction to North Country people in New Hampshire, which may not be fair for the rest of our state. I think the success for teaching is to do a lot of visuals and hands-on activities uh, for the students because when I was in high school, when I get bored, I fall asleep or just do something else, draw or do anything like that. So I found that if you can keep the students interest, uh, you can, uh, by visuals or by making science fun, by doing some demos that will either amaze them or make them trick me. I have a lot of tricks up my sleeve, even though I have a short sleeve sh shirt, but I do have a lot of tricks in which the kids do not, uh, they have to think about it before they come up with an answer. I enjoy teaching. And because of that, I don't know what I'll do when I get out of teaching. I think what makes Mr. Bartlett special as a person and as a teacher is how eccentric he is. I think that it's his passion for things that he does that causes students to be excited about coming to his class every day. I was sent to Simmons College to, in 1992 to learn about the internet. Believe it or not, the internet was just started for, uh, at that time, and how to use email in a classroom. So I got selected out of, four, out of all the teachers. I was one of the 40 teachers that got selected, and we went down to Simmons College to learn for two weeks on how to use email. Part of that, they said that you need a um, project to get kids interested in using email. And so, they came up with an idea called lichens. Lichens grow on trees, they grow like about that big every, every year. And I didn't like that project because I knew my kids would be bored too. So I came back and I saw this dead skunk, believe it or not, on the road as I was driving. So I came up to this white, don't we monitor roadkill? So the first thing that I did was call Fish and Game and they said we monitor roadkill for bear, deer, and moose but we don't do it for anything else and so I said what about all the other oh we, we're too busy we don't have time for that so that's when I came up with the roadkill project in which kids were sent they owned a road and every time they saw a dead animal they reported it <coughs> they came to class and then we sent emails to 40 different schools on what was killed in, in Derry New Hampshire compared to up in Callis Maine or someplace in Vermont Brattleboro Vermont uh, in some places in Massachusetts. When finally somebody came up, uh, you know what would be good for you? Dr. Splat. That's, that's good. So after that, I've, I've taken that moniker name and uh, I'm online with that as well. <laughs> there were times that I think I wished Mr. Bartlett became Mr. Splat. Um, he has a way of, through his enthusiasm, annoying people. As a longtime teacher, as Brewster is also, um, the question was asked about what kept us coming back. I think people like Brewster kept me coming back because he was entertaining by all means. But more importantly, I think for the probably the first two thirds of my career, this was a school that supported teachers and let teachers, teachers pursue their passion. So what do I want to do in the next couple of years? Everybody keeps coming around and saying, when are you retiring, when are you retiring? So I really don't know because I think I'm really scared to retire because I'm having too much fun. <laughs> so I have no idea what I want to do, but I want to make a difference. And basically, I, maybe in a couple years, I'll have a plan. I see a lot of my friends that have retired, they spend all their time on Facebook or they clean up their rooms so there's not a bit of dust in their, in their house. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not gonna be on Facebook every waiting minute, waiting for the next thing. So. 
I got to think of something to do outside. When I do retire, um, there'll be a big party. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Did you post your attendance? I did. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs>